Welcome back to the garage and today we're back on this Dell Precision T3620. So in a previous video I did, I showed that I picked this up on the eBay for $70 to include tax and shipping. Even though that may be steep for an older platform like this, we got some good bang for the buck out of it. i7-6700, 32 gigs of DDR4, had a Fire Pro 5100, which although not a gaming graphics card, still worked pretty decent. Windows activation, which is a win. And this thing was ready to go right out of the box. Only thing we had to do was, I believe, was add a M.2 to it. Yeah, I think I had to add an M.2. Pretty sure it didn't come with one. Now, I went ahead and recouped a little bit of the money that I got into. The W5100 did sell to somebody that uh, used that graphics card for that type of stuff uh, for $30. So now we're into this $60. And it's time to sell them. And the name given for this PC was the Wayne PC because whoever had it, I mean, they put the name Wayne on it, and it's a PC, so hey, Wayne PC. Now, I had talked about some uh, ambitions and things I wanted to do for it, because I really like these platforms, and they're fun to case mod. I like doing the, uh, cutting the panels, adding to RGB, you know, custom paint job and all that stuff. I like getting into it. It's fun, it's relaxing, therapeutic, but we got to get this thing sold because we have a customer who need it, and he needs it because he got scammed buying a PC. And we'll talk about that more towards the end of the video. But for now, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade the power supply really easy, pop in a better graphics card, and even make this thing shine a little bit. Show you a little secret to make it shine. So how you could take a PC like this, either turn it into your personal gaming rig or flip it for sale. So let's get started. So now the first thing that I need to do to it is change out the power supply. And primarily because it's 290 watts, which will work for certain types of graphics cards. And I'll show you a little trick in just a second for that. But also, I'm going to put something in a little beefier. So we want to make sure that we have enough power for it. And also, we need that supplemental power. Now, the power connectors, if you look, are not traditional. I mean, we do have the, uh, you know, the four pin CPU thing, but this won't work. And we're not going to splice it or do some ghetto tomfoolery of it. We're actually going to do it the right way. Now, I will share this little tidbit that I've done. I only recommend it if you're gonna use a low wattage graphics card, something like a 1650, and uh, that will work, because you don't wanna put a graphics card that's gonna put a big draw on it. The issue that you're gonna run into it is, number one, it could blow it, computer just won't run, be unstable, and yeah, go ahead and change it. So now, you have the SATA connectors, which Dell kinda of uses this weird, five pin and it gives you a whole bunch of SATA connectors for all the drives that you probably will never use on this type of computer but if you get a SATA to a six eight pin you can actually use a graphics card like this like this 1650 plug it in and it would work the way I recommend doing this is get on a website use the power supply calculator and find out what is your system going to pull now this system paired with that 1650 will pull about roughly 230 to 240 watts which is pretty good. You also want to take into account 10% for, you know, over voltages and stuff like that. So 270, this is a 290 watt. That would be more than enough for this type of setup. But considering that the customer is going to have plans to put in something better like a MSI Aero 2060, even a 3050, the MSI Aeros are arrows or arrows, whatever. The MSI Aeros are actually um, really good for these type of computers. And that's what I use. But we're gonna put in the right power supply. We're not gonna go with this uh, tomfoolery over here. And just do things the right way. So let's just pop this out. Four screws. And the good thing is, is that it's just standard mounting. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing to it. Just four screws, that is all. Now there's a little tab over here, push it down and this slides right out. Let's disconnect our four pin. Loosen that up to get our cable and this thing should slide right out. And our new power supply is just gonna slide right in. Now using this Thermaltake Smart 600 watt, it works great, I've tested it and it'll definitely get the job done. And this slides in just like so. We just gotta deal with this whole spaghetti mess. Now this old power supply, I mean, it works, but it's not gonna work for anything else. 
Um, if you're one of those that deal with a lot of these Dells, flip them, move them, repair them. I mean, these things you could get them for I mean, a dime a dozen. They're so cheap because, uh, you know, people get rid of them and there's still some good values. There is. But in this case, off to recycling, that one's going to go. So now the trick to getting this 8 pin to a standard connector, which is going to be this guy right over here. Now you could get this on the Amazon. It's about 10 to $15. I'll post a picture and I'll make sure I have a link below. And this will ensure that our power supply or any power supply can work on this computer. Now, one question I get asked all the time, what power supply did you use? What power supply can I use? Yada, yada, yada. Folks, use any one that you have. I mean, any one that you get. I mean, you could go to the Best Buy, New Way, Amazon, whatever. Buy it, pop it in. Just, I mean, be reasonable. You're not going to put a 1,000 watt power supply in here unless you get it for cheap or free. So now this connector is just going to go plugged in just like so. And we'll clean this up. We're going to pop these two together just like this. Maybe, probably, yep, just like that, and that's it. That's all you need so you can put in a better graphics card, and you're ready to rock and roll. And like I said earlier, the mounting is the same. Reuse the screws, or if you're one of those that just like, you know, using the black screws, go ahead and do that, but in this case, these screws are perfectly fine. Now we're going to try to clean up these cables the cheap and dirty method. Because this drive doesn't use any SATA CD DVD drives, or we're not using a regular SATA drive, we don't need any of these power connectors. So we're just going to zip tie them just like so. Snip that just like that. And we're just going to tuck this along with the excess of the 24-pin uh, connector right over here. Now this is a lot easier because we don't have the CD DVD drive. So just kind of keep that in mind if you do. Now our CPU power, just a regular four pin, nothing too fancy about it. I'm just gonna tuck this in right over here. And one thing you gotta keep in mind is, is that um, your cable management is gonna be as good as it gets. I'm not going crazy on this. I'm just tucking everything away so it doesn't interfere with the fans, block potential airflow or whatever. But this will work just fine. Let me just kinda, there we go. It looks a little good. Yeah, that's a lot better. Professional. Now, one thing we are going to do is this has 32 gigs. We're not going to sell it with 32 gigs. It's a little bit of overkill, and we can get more bang for the buck by repurposing this, um, keeping the two 16 gig kits on it. So we're taking these out, and we're popping in these two 8 gig sticks that I got from another Optiplex of similar generation. So if you don't repurpose these Optiplexes, or Precision, excuse me, if you don't repurpose these old computers, um, gut them out. That's also another good thing to do. If you get them cheap enough, you could get enough spare parts for another build. Nothing wrong with this memory, folks. Still good memory. Now for the graphics card, we're going with this EVGA. It's a 1650. It's a three slaughter. It's got the six pin. And that will work for this. Now, I know I talked about using the um, adapters over there, but considering the customer may upgrade later um, as they're getting more and more into gaming, I want to be able to give them that option so they could pop something in, like, a, like I said, 2060, 3050, or maybe some of the AMD flavors. Now, for the graphics cards, let me give you a few suggestions. Number one, the smaller, the better. Like I talked about, the MSI Arrows work really good. Um, as they won't interfere with this USB 3 connector, which that could be an issue. You're going to be limited to that. So that's one issue that you're going to run into. But the other one is the drive cage. If the card is long but clears this, this drive cage needs to come out. Unless you're going to run mechanical drives, I say get rid of them. And the way I've done that in the past is drilling out these rivets. Just take a drill, drill them out, and this thing comes out really easy. Now there is... Um, I believe one or two, there might be just be one. Don't quote me 100%, but I believe there's one rivet. There might be another one um, up in the front. This panel just comes off really easy like so. In fact, let me show you. Yeah, just like so. And as you can see, we have that one rivet. So you're gonna drill out this rivet in the front. These right over here, one, two, three. Don't drill this one out or you're gonna make your panel look loose. 
this comes right out and then you can put in a longer graphics card as long as it's able to clear that now for you to say to yourself oh well i want to run an ssd double-sided tape works really good i've taped them two over here and i've even tucked them over here or you could take a screw put it over here that would work i know a little makeshift a little bit ghetto but it works you know you try to get the most bang for the buck save a couple of dollars this is how you do it folks the graphics card is going to slide in like so and this one is a little tight as if you're going to use this graphics card this part over here is going to touch the uh, usb3 connector but it's fine as this plastic gives a little bit and it doesn't affect the operation of it so you'll be fine So to kind of show you, this connector hits it ever so slightly. I mean, it's nothing to write home about. It's fine. And now for our power connector, we're going to use this right over here, our three pin. And you can actually use this mount for the power supply. And just hold this in place. We could wire tie that and we could really go pretty all day long, but for now this works, but I will clean that up. All right, so everything's installed, working perfect. And I'm just gonna do a quick benchmark with Shadow the Tomb Raider. I am gonna do a whole bunch of other benchmarks off camera, but for the sake of time, it is late in the garage and I need to get this project wrapped up. It also gets to sleep because, well, I gotta work in the morning. So 1080p, we're at high settings. I mean, our averages are probably gonna be about 40, 50 frames per second. If we lower it to medium, it would work. i7 6700, a 1650, and 16 gigs of DDR4. So let's recap what we got into it. So paid 70 for it, sold the old graphics card for 30, that brings it down to 40. Had to buy a uh, M.2 for it. That was 20 at the time I bought it, but now it's about more like 30 for a uh, 512. So we're into this roughly $70. Now the graphics card, I went with a 1650. You have a bunch of different options as long as it fits. Like I said, the MSI arrows work really great for these if you could get them cheap, something like a 2060, 3050. This one roughly goes for about $100 if you get it on eBay. I've seen it on the Facebook marketplace, which where I got it from, and I paid $60 for it, so $130. And our power supply and our adapter, 20 for the power supply, 10 for the adapter. Maybe it's gone up a little bit, but the power supply I bought on the marketplace, so we're into $30, so 60 70 130 plus 30 so we're up to $160 and we got an upgraded gaming PC and putting this together was as simple as just plugging it in no splicing no modding and it's flipping awesome that a $10 cable allows you to do this with a computer that really wasn't designed for this so a quick backstory on this when I bought this my plan was to uh, case mod it I plan to cut this out kind of do maybe a little infinity mirror or you know some type of uh, plexiglass to see inside same thing with the front custom paint job and I had some ideas to jazz this up and it was really really gonna be cool and it's fine because I'll end up finding another one and uh, we'll eventually get around to doing that but anyways the reason behind selling this and not being able to get to it is because I had another computer I built about a week ago it was a Ryzen 5 5600 I believe it was 5600 it had a 5500 XT, 16 gigs of DDR4, 500 gig SSD, you know, all that good stuff. It was in a really cool, deep, cool case that I got from my local computer shop, Silver Knights PC, dirt cheap. Put it up on the Facebook marketplace for $250. People didn't really think that I was selling a computer like that for $250, but I was. I mean, I was into it like pretty much nothing between uh, the YouTube revenue from I made from another computer and then um, also parts that I get uh, you buy them used on the Facebook marketplace you can get a good bulk deal sometimes just a whole bunch of different ways that I get parts cheap which allows me to build computers and sell them for a low price and still make a bit of profit so a guy reaches out to me he's interested in buying it and uh, he was number one type priority on that and we were trying to orchestrate to get this thing uh, sold and get it to him but he lives two and a half hours away which kind of you know unfortunate for him and I just had a lot of people just reaching out you know trying to uh, buy it for the asking price and we tried to orchestrate it, but long story short, he was unable to make it out here. So um, I moved on to the next person that was interested in buying it. They bought it and that was that. So the next day, the guy reaches out to me and says, hey, I wanted to buy a computer because I really wanted to get into some uh, PC gaming, but I got scammed. So we go back and forth. We're talking on the uh, you know messenger for Facebook and all that stuff. 
And long story short, a guy local to him had a computer for sale. I think he paid like $200 for it. And I'll try to post pictures up here. And when he took it home, it doesn't power on. And apparently it doesn't have a storage drive. He took it to another friend that he has that looked into it and he says, hey, it's gonna require a little bit of work and some money to get working on it. And that's unfortunate. He reached out to the seller and of course the seller does what the seller was gonna do and you know what they're gonna do, ghost him, the end. Not too much you can do about that. When you buy a use, you assume the risk and that's unfortunate. So after talking to him and going back and forth, I told him, I said, hey, if you want to take a drive, I'll get it ready for you this weekend. So right now it's uh, Wednesday. I'll get it for you Saturday and we'll swap. I'll take that one. You take this one, I wanna to try to help you out. And he was like, cool, awesome. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take that broken computer that uh, doesn't turn on, doesn't work, don't even know if the specs are legit with it. And we're gonna to try to see what we can do. Maybe we could fix it, flip it, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly which way I'm gonna go with that. But then again, I don't even know if it works. So, but either way, I do wanna thank you guys because um, the views and the support of the channel we're able to do stuff like that. And that's my whole goal and purpose of this channel. So if somebody gets scammed, let's try to help them out and um, take good care of them. And thanks to you guys, um, those who subscribe to the Patreon account and watch the channel and even those who uh, send in stuff for the channel. Um, those contributions is what allows me to help people out like that. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna help them out, get him this, which I know it's gonna be great. We're gonna send him pictures and videos of it running, get him back on track and see what we could do with the other one. I don't know. Worst case scenario, I got a pile of junk. Best case scenario, I might have a case. So that's cool. So comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, concerns, criticisms. Um, like to hear your input on that type of scenario. And have you ran into that? Or do you know somebody who's ran into that? If you like this video, definitely hit the like button, subscribe if you're not. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next. <music>